Welcome back to my channel, mga kabito best. So today I will be discussing on understanding the self subject, and uh, we will be looking on ourselves, on the self, from the lens of a philosophical perspectives. By the way, I'm Mam Ma Salve. You can call me Mam Fertes. I am a BS Psychology graduate and um, currently taking up Masters of Arts in Education, major in Social Sciences. And of course, this subject will govern all about the question, the basic question in understanding the self or in psychology. Balikan natin ng sarili natin. The basic question, who am I? So, we will be discovering more on the philosophical perspectives nga and we will be analyzing each uh, proponents of philosophy. And of course, before I move on to the topic proper or the, the discussion proper, don't forget, of course, to watch my videos, click the bell button, subscribe to my channel, and of course, like and leave a comment for the improvement of my videos. So, as you can see, we are living in a world wherein time or yung oras, it never stops. Hindi siya humihinto. Pwedeng isa sa atin huminto yung oras, but then again, time itself does not sleep or does not stop. Okay, so on, on understanding the self, time is an important factor of a human person to define or to determine or to discover the self better and deeper. Time takes fast and it never stops. And every day, there is a number of 385,000 person or human being that is born in this realm and that is according to worldcount.com and here locally in the Philippines every day sa kada gising natin sa bawat araw na meron tayo there is a number of 4,856 Filipinos that was born in the country so meaning maraming man ang namamatay a human person or an individual uh, was born into this world. The mother or the carrier of the so-called another human individual was developed and perfectly molded into a human being. And that is you, that is me, and that is us. For some, that serves as a miracle. That's why it's called the miracle of life. But for some people that they are not prepared or ready to face the reality of life, that they are now into a world where they are capable of reproducing, a new component of genetics within the system of that person will be developed in the first turn into a certain person someday, we cannot tell. No one can tell what lies ahead of us. But one thing for sure, by the moment or the process of conception and after birth, a new baby or a new human being was given a name. And that name will serve as the brand of the person. A life with a certain name that is given by the parents, specifically the mother. So I want you to reflect on this activity, even if you are at home. I want you to get a piece of paper and of course a writing material about pen and If you will compare your your previous write, writings in to in today's time parang i-imagine mo or magre-reflect ka talaga na paano mo nagawa now facing back the old times it's difficult for us to write our names but then again slowly 
but gently. No processo. No? May, may kwento kung paano natin naabot at naituloy ang ating pangalan. Alam mo, my dear, to be the best, it is the most difficult part of of a, a person. No? It's not, it's not the problem, so basic. You write your name, and then you struggle upon writing up your name. That, that, that will be the same struggle when you face the reality of life and you reach the age of maturity. Okay? But then again, let's go back to the basic. Ang pagsulat ng pangalan ay parang parang parusa at pagpapahirap sa atin sa buhay ng mga problema ang nararanasan natin. Pero dahil nasanay na tayo kung paano natin utuhid ang ating pangalan at naitrakis na natin yung sanay na tayo kaliwa o tanay na tayo ng umpisa Now, thinking deeper yung name na sinulat nyo on that piece of paper that specific name it is the name that was given by you by your parents and see how they create they think and they dig deeper different things to create your name or to just put or give that name to you. Again, while you are writing your name, you struggle. And in that stage or point in your life, you experience how to struggle. When you are young, you experience how to struggle by just narrowly writing your names. But the struggle is not permanent because by consistently doing what you are doing when you are writing, slowly but gently you get used into it until such time the struggle that was encountered by us will be shortened and you will not feel the struggle anymore in the longer way you write your name you perfect it little by little and by the moment you reach the the higher the higher grades marami ka nang nilalagay ng style sa mismo or even you use calligraphy just to give emphasis to the name because that is who we are when you are young pag tinanong ka sino ka ba pag tinanong ka who are you your answer will be you mean directly but then again when you grow old and you improve your life not only your writing improve your life when somebody ask you sino ka ba or who are you it's not just the name that you will tell along that name is a deeper a deeper person with a deeper story our name your name corresponds to the question who am i our name is our signifier and it is the representation of ourself. Our name contains a story of our being, a meaningful brand that designates us into this world. But by means of calling us by our nicknames, it has a deeper sense of closeness or relationship. Diba kapag tinawag ka, using your nickname, so it signifies something. It signifies or it was attached to a relationship or a bond that is not usual than the other. To respond on the philosophical question, who am I? Let us discover ourselves or the self by means of using the the layer of the onion so as you can see the onion or yung sibuya sa tipikal if you will look at it it is covered by different layers so the self contains 
different layers or the stuff is multi-layered and and we have various roles in life. May kanya-kanya tayong pagkatao sa buhay. May iba-iba tayong pagkatao sa buhay. Try to reflect on yourself. You are not just a child. Hindi ka lang anak, kapatid ka rin. Hindi ka lang kapatid, estudyante ka pa. Or kung meron kang relationship right now, hindi ka lang kaibigan, boyfriend or girlfriend ka pa. So, meaning, we all have different roles. And sometimes, it was so confusing. Um, what role ka ba masaya? O saan role ka ba ng buhay na masaya? Kung pinakamababaw na parte ng pagkatao natin, say for example, ano yung mga gusto natin? Your likes, your dislikes, your fashion, the outer you. It is something that can be seen easily by other people the way you dress up, your clothes, and so on. So, those are the superficial layers or yung talagang balat lang ng sibuyas na mababaw lang nasa panlabas na kaano-anong tao. The next layer is the middle layer. The middle layer is your political views, your attachment to the society, societal positions. Basta may kinalaman siya sa sarili at sa lipunang ginagalawa natin. Not only within the family, but the context of the school, hospital, your, the politics. No? Ito yung mga panahon natin na konektado sa external world. So, after the middle layer is the inner layer. So, the inner layer uh, in the onion layers is or contains our somehow the deeper us ito yung mga attitudes natin ito yung mga goals na yung mga hopes yung mga fears natin yung aware tayo about that yung ginagawa natin yung of course yung faith natin our spiritual self lies on the inner the inner layer in the onion of course in the bulb of of the onion nandun yung pinaka inner core so the inner core is our self it is our personality. Ito yung pagkatao natin. So, sino nga ba tayo? Maaaring iba yung pinapakita natin out in the outside world. But when we are alone, we are we are with no one. Aside from yourself. Doon tayo nakikita natin ang nire-reflect sa atin kung sino talaga tayo. To cut it short, there are a lot of, of course, philosophers contributed in this subject which is the understanding the self so we have Socrates, we have Plato we have René Descartes and so on so but before the established names in philosophy we also have Thales we have a lot eh? okay so before these philosophers starting to Socrates down to St. Augustine, Plato, etc. We also have, of course, Socratic times wherein uh, the names Thales, Pythagoras, Paramedes, etc. They were also first thinkers. No? Pero, they are not particularly myself. They extend their learnings or their knowledge on the heavenly bodies, the movement of the earth, the, the the sun, the moon. In other words, during that time, in connection to our local local uh, language here in the Philippines, meron na silang pinaniniwalaan, kagaya rin ng mga sinakunang Pilipino. They also believe that once this specific situation or place or phenomenon gave, gave them benefit, sasambahin nila yun. So, through animism. So, ganun yun sila. They, uh, during the pre-Socratic time, the times of Pythagoras, Caldes, and uh, Paramedes, maray pang iba, okay, naninibala sila sa mga just Josa or gods and goddesses. Say, for example, if the specific um, forest gave them benefit of 
giving them food, shelter, etc. Therefore, they will buy and give praise to that specific. Or in other words, in return, they, they respect. Huh? And that's why we also have uh, mythology. But we have great mythology. Uh, we have Hercules, Venus. So, by that moment, Socrates entered the picture. He allegedly accused by polluting the mind of the youth or even the old ones, you know, the seasoned ones. He also said that the true task of the philosopher is to know oneself. This is also a quotation or perception or mantra of other people. You are not conscious about the decisions that you are making or will be making. If you give your life uh, decisions that are random without even thinking, the true task of a philosopher, according to Socrates, is to know oneself. After the composition, or adding up to the proposition of Socrates, he also added that the man, tayo bilang tao, we are composed of two components, the body and the soul. The body helps us to realize oneself and to know oneself. The body is a material or it helps us to animate our future, our destiny in life. And of course, the body, when the body gets tired, the soul is always there. If the body decays, when we, re we reach death, the, the soul will be the representation of ourselves. Plato, the student of Socrates, uh, once said that it's not only the body that has its component, or the self that has components, the, the soul or our our totality as a person has also different uh, components in terms of our soul. So we have the rational soul, we also have the spirited soul, and lastly the appetitive soul. So those souls has interplays within the human body. So the rational soul forged by reason, lahat ng ating iniisip, Lahat ng ating paunawa, intellect, has to govern the affairs of the human person. Ito yung bumubuo sa ating pagkatao as human, the rational soul. The way we think and we act or decide on things. Next is the spirited soul, which in charge of our emotions. No? Ito yung may kinalaman sa ating emotion. According to Plato, the way we respond like love, uh, affection, desire, and it's not desire, um, anger, fear, and all emotions that the human have, it lies on the spirited soul. Okay, and the last one is the appetitive soul. The appetitive soul is in charge based on desires. In other words, desires that the human, that the human body needs. And what are those? Eating, drinking, having sleep. Or even sexual intercourse will, so, uh, will fall on the appetitive soul. Okay? Another view in understanding the self raised on the foundation of St. Augustine. He anchored his perception to the perception of Socrates and also the perception of Plato that man has his body and soul. But what is unique in St. Augustine? is that in understanding the self for us to be able to understand ourselves deeper we need to we need to include our Christianity our Christianity is our divinity that it is agreed that man is uh, bifurcated in nature that there is an aspect of man which dwells in the world that is imperfect and continuously yearns to be with the divine while the other is capable of reaching immortality. In other words, the understanding the self through Saint Augustine is by means of one's faith that if you believe in the divinity, 
that when the body dies or when a person end up his or her life there is there is the soul that will continue the life the life after death the person will become alive in the sense of god and the existence of the supreme being above us in understanding the self we cannot exclude the name rena descartes he is the founder of the Cartesian plane that we are using in algebra, the X and the Y. And he is also the father of modern philosophy. Rene Descartes imparted to people, or in the subject understanding the self, that one or we need to, to pass the test of doubt. Because as a person, as a human, we have the mind. Okay, so the logic of the mind, it was put in the upper part of the body is for us to use first the mind before the body. So if something is a clear doubt, then that is the only time when one should actually buy a proposition. Okay, so not all the time you should subscribe, not all the time you need to be persuaded by the words of other people, not all the time you need to buy this thing because you have the mind. You, need, you first need to use that mind and doubt before choosing or deciding for yourself. His famous Cogito Ergo Sum, or I think therefore I am, is one of the most used foundation in understanding the self or even in, your, in the current times where you are in the college level you have this jargon think before you click think before you do such a thing no? you always rationalize before doing things in life you, you need to to balance it with thinking first before taking actions and that is uh, in understanding the self, one common uh, ways on how to achieve or to understand or to discover ourselves by means of thinking deeper of ourselves. So next to Rita Descartes is a Scottish philosopher named David Hume. So David Hume gave us uh, or impart with us in understanding the self on uh, how we understand ourselves that contributes to the understanding of our experiences. Again, let us understand how you is different from other philosopher and what are his contributions in understanding the self. According to you, the self is not an entity over and beyond the body. It is similar to Rene Descartes that our self is not our body. Empiricism is a school of thought that said that idea or our knowledge can only be possible if it is sensed and experience. So to understand ourselves is to look on our experiences and our senses. Okay, so continually, Hume's knowledge can be attained by experience and moreover it is through experience and reaching to a certain situations that lead us to understand who we are your emotions your heart aches your fear your anger towards somebody or even the failure that you might have those are bundle of impressions so if we try to examine his or her experiences it was only categorized into two and what are those two according to you our impressions and ideas so those two are important and serve as the basis or basic object of our experience by sensation and they later form your thoughts for example when one touches an eyes, the cold sensation is an impression. You cannot have an impression if you could not have a direct experiences on it. And because of that, ideas are formed and serve copies of our impressions. So, the things that we experience or, or directly experience are actually copies of our ideas. 
it was said that ideas is not as lively or vivid like our impressions. So basically, if you think of the idea of falling in love, for example, at the moment you acted upon that, it becomes your impressions. So that's why if you experience directly on heartache or wrong relationship, what will happen? You can actually give us the impression that it's not the love that hurts, but it is hurts that hurts love, no? So we, can, we cannot blame the fact that your impressions are random because wherever you go, whatever you do, the people you cross on streets, the people you cross on your life, it's like, you know, the way you look at other person, you look at their behavior, the way we judge his experience or his behavior is that or that will give you the impressions but the moment you share it with other people you are not sharing them the impressions you are giving them ideas so to sum it up our self is unified because we have particular experiences so moving on we have Immanuel Kant he viewed ourselves as perception not just randomly infused with human experience without organizing principle. He anchored with his uh, perception or theory in understanding the self of Hume. He accepted the truthfulness of Hume's in terms of perception and sensation of impressions. But he denies the random things about the impressions. He said that we need to organize these impressions in order to understand ourselves. There, uh, there is actually the mind that organizes the impression that man actually got from the outside world. Example, time and space is an idea that one cannot find in the world but is built in our mind and can't cause that as the apparatus of the mind. Without the mind, one cannot organize different impressions that one gets from the different relation to his existence. The self is actively engaged intelligence in man that synthesizes all knowledge and experiences. The self is not an entity or personality. It is the seed of knowledge acquisition for all human persons. So basically, we are all organized based on our intelligences. No one can say that he is better than one another without looking what kind of intelligences that person has. There are things that other people have that you don't have, and there are things you have which in the other way around other people don't have. So you yourself is actually incompatible. There are people who are good in recitation or even good in speaking or even good on ways they see things in life. But there, some people are rich, some people are, are poor. So actually, you can compare it because you are distinctively different. But at the end of the long run, we all have, according to Kam, uh, we, we need to accept ourselves because in understanding the self if you know exactly how to accept the kind of intelligence you have and embrace that you can do better than what you have right now Gilbert Ryle according to Ryle that our behavior is a manifestation of our self every day so it was not based on one particular event that makes you a good person and the other day it makes you a bad person. He said here that it was a manifestation of day-to-day -day life. If you really want to understand yourself, you cannot find yourself unless you come to see that yourself is the entirety of the parts. If you happen to visit a friend in a university and you want to understand what a university looks like, Visit the library, the admin, or the people there, the staff. In short, the self is the whole of the parts of the things that we have. For example, what kind of behavior that you show when you go to school and all those 
those things is part of your life will actually contribute to understand yourself for the activity here's the direction in your own word please um, give your uh, understanding about the various philosophical perspectives of these philosophers when it comes to understanding the self and how was their perception of the self compatible with your own definition or perception of yourself okay so ipagpipili uh, ka lang kung sino doon ang all of the philosophers ang mas malapit ng panahon sa panahon okay so once again thank you for listening and if you have question feel free to comment on the comment box below and kung hindi pa po kayo nakapag-subscribe sa channel ko please subscribe and click the bell button and don't forget to like and share this video thank you very much bye bye